Hi, I'm Jody Salvo. I'm a minor training instructor with the minor training program at Penn State University. This video is going to observe two miners. There has been a evacuation ordered at the mine and one of the two is working out by, has not gotten word about the evacuation and the second miner has to meet up with him and guide him out of the coal mine. In this particular video, what is going to happen is, instead of it being a straightforward evacuation, this time, these fellows are going to encounter some obstacles and have to work their way around them to get successfully out of the coal mine. Everybody inside, inside Sam, this is an emergency, this is an emergency, inside, 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 hey Sam, inside. Yeah, this is Sam. Okay, is everyone tracked for? Okay, what was his last location in time? Okay, I'll go find him. The key to finding someone working out by during an emergency is to maintain an effective tracking system at your coma. In an escape situation, Miners need to be able to communicate with each other. What they really want to do is talk to each other. What's going on? But they need to keep in mind that there is no way they can take that mouthpiece out until they're in known fresh air. One of the ways that they could communicate is with hand signals. Another is with written notes. But remember, never take that mouthpiece out until you're in known fresh air. escaping a coal mine, one of the major problems can be obstacles in your escape way. Where in the case of a major explosion, the escape way may look entirely different. Walls may be blown out, the whole area may be blacked with soot from the explosion. One of the problems is that miners travel the same route every day when they go to work, and they just don't pay attention to the travel way. They need to review the mind map daily to make sure no escape ways have changed and be prepared to work their way out of the mine if an escape way is blocked. Here one of the miners is taking a gas test and that's necessary if you're going through a trapdoor or moving from entry to entry. Ventilation controls could be changed from the force of the explosion. But if ventilation controls are intact, they need to close doors or leave them open the way they found them. They have successfully escaped from the mine and their fellow miners are so excited to see them come out safe and sound. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> Let's listen in on a conversation between Joe Flick and John Unger, a man who was rescued from a mine emergency. John feels he gained some wisdom that he would like to share with his fellow miners. My name is Joseph Flick. I'm with the Minor Training Program at Penn State University. And with me is Mr. John Unger. John, several years ago, was involved in a mining emergency in which he and the members of his mining crew were trapped for three days underground by flooding water that accidentally entered the mine. After trying several escape routes, they managed to isolate themselves in the highest portion of the mine and await rescue. John, thank you very, very much for coming today and being part of our video and helping share your experiences with others. Your emergency developed rather quickly. And did to you the time seem like it was moving quickly or did it, things just seem to move slowly? In the beginning, it, it went fast. There was a lot of different things for us to do. 
uh, try to escape. We had one of our miners uh, separated from us. We had to try to get him back and things like that. The first part of it, there was a lot, of, a lot of activity. I mean, a lot of different things to do, a lot of things to look at. But as it went on, actually, after we got everybody back and we were all together and, uh, and we were waiting, it, it kind of slowed down some. But overall, it went, uh, it went pretty good. It went pretty quick. When the events started to unfold, did you think or did you have time to think, uh, okay, what do I do now? Or did your training and reflexes kick in? Well, our training and our reflexes had kicked in. I mean, we were experienced men and, and we looked at the situation, what we thought we had to do, what we needed to try to do. And we put all that into play and, and it kind of went off of our instincts. Um, we were experienced crew. We had a lot of guys with a lot of time and we all had ideas and we put all that into play and, and took it from there. You probably had a lot of things going through your mind at any one given time. Was it difficult to stay focused? The key to it, I think, I really believe is, is, is the hardest part is to stay focused because your mind wants to do a lot of different things. I mean, your mind wants to, you know, it, it, it works, with, uh, works against you sometimes. And the biggest thing was you had to stay focused on and staying together and escaping and, 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 and using all your assets that you had. That was the biggest, the key to it, is you had to stay focused on your job and what you were trying to do. Well, in your case, you guys tried several escape routes before you ultimately uh, uh, discovered that there was none and you, and you uh, sought the highest portion of the mine to seek refuge. Like, how important is it to convey the message to miners that they need to be completely familiar with the layout of their mine, and their emergency escape plan, and their emergency procedures? I think the key to it is you have to know, you, you need to know where you are at all times when you're working in there in your escape routes and things like that because when you actually get in a situation like that and you go to escape, you could really get yourself in some serious trouble if you didn't know where you're at or had an idea what you were doing. I said, so it's very important that you look at your escape mats and things like that and, and, and go from there and have a good idea of where you are and how, what it takes, to, where you need to be to get out. Now, did you discuss escape options with the other miners? Or did you all seem to agree on the same plan? Well, we, we, we talked about it and come up with a plan. We were very fortunate. Our, our mine, for our face boss had a lot of time. He was a good mining man. And we had a lot of, you know, we just didn't really debate between anybody. We knew what it was gonna take to get out. And, and we just all agreed on, on what we were gonna try to do. I mean, we just kind of worked together. I mean, we're experienced crew, experienced guys. And we, we all agreed on what we were gonna try to do to try to get out. It sounds like you knew each other well, you worked well together, and you had good teamwork. And I think that is a secret to uh, some of the successes of uh, escaping an emergency, is good teamwork. Would well, you agree? Yes, that's the key to it. And we were very fortunate. We had worked together, uh, most of us at different mines and things like that, and we knew each other because we'd been in the business a long time. And, and we, we knew what it would take, and uh, we didn't agree or anything. We just decided we were going to stay together as a team and work together and, and, and whatever it took. Uh, we weren't going in different directions. You know, the decisions we made, we all talked about, and that's kind of what we went with, what we, we all thought we all had input, and we went from there. When you guys found your first exit blocked, you tried several others uh, before choosing to seek refuge, and could you tell the other miners watching this how important it is to try and exhaust every possible route of escape before seeking refuge? I think it's, it's the most important part is, is you got to keep trying. You can't give up. You got to try to find a way out of there because to, to really stay is a hard thing because uh, that was hard for us for that decision to be made. I mean, we, I mean, we tried every point, every part we knew to try to get out of there. And, and when we had to make that decision, that, that was a hard decision to make. But the key to it is, is, is you don't give up. You just keep trying to find a way out till there's exhaust every, every way there is until you decide you have to seek refuge and do that. Well, at the time of your event, you were an experienced underground miner with over 25 years of experience. And undoubtedly, during those years, you've gone through a lot of training. And could you possibly share with uh, the viewers how important the, the, the idea of training is to take it seriously and to get everything they can from it? I think your training's the key to it. No matter what you think when that day you have to go and how boring it's going to be and how long a day it is, you've got to go and make the most out of it because every, every year there's something new being introduced to you and, and things like that. And I never thought we'd ever use any of this. I always thought it was a complete waste of my time. But as I found out, uh, it paid off. I mean, you know, you, you use your, your knowledge that you've gathered over the years and 
and put it all together. And the key to it is, I mean, you just got to keep going. And, and no matter how you think it is, it, it, it has a reason for being. And, uh, if, and it comes the time to use it, I said, and you'll have it. In a mining emergency, you rarely, if ever, get a second chance to make a decision over again. And had you ever in your career pondered a crisis or an emergency prior to this one actually happening? No, not really. My theory was it was always going to happen to the other guy. It was never going to happen to us. It was something we read about and it would never happen to us. But when it actually happened to us, I, you know, I thought, wow. But no, we never really thought too much about it. I never did personally. I, I just always thought that it was going to happen to the other guy. And, and that's kind of how I looked at it until it actually happened to us. And then, then you look at it completely different then. And you, put your ideas together and go from there. And as someone who's actually been there and done that and been involved and successfully, could you share with the viewers how important the will to survive is? The will to survive is the most important thing you have because you, you, you try everything you, you know how to do to survive and you put all your knowledge together and things like that to do that because that is the key to making it survive. And, and the key to it too, another thing that's really important is, is like I said before, you know, you stay with everybody and, and you work at, at, at what you know how to do and, and everybody's idea. But the will to survive is you put everything together, everybody's ideas, whatever it takes to get the job done. I mean, and, and that's what you, do, you go with. And as someone who has successfully survived a mining crisis, is there anything that you could share to the viewers on a suggestion or two to better prepare themselves for an event in their, in their mining career? Uh, well, the, the key to it is, I think that one of the biggest keys is, is, is teamwork. Staying together with, your, with everybody, working together, and, and, and doing that is, is the, probably the biggest key. The second thing is, is, is all your knowledge, your knowledge you have in the business, and you put all that into play too. But the, the main thing is, is, is teamwork, it's staying together and, and, and working together to get everybody out. Because you go in there with everybody and you want to make sure you come out with everybody. And teamwork is the key to it. I mean, you can't do it by yourself. You got to have everybody there with you. We both have the, uh, the belief that uh, we want to try to help somebody. And John, I thank you very, very much for your efforts to try to make that happen. And I hope some miner somewhere can get something from our conversation I hope too. If, if I can, we can help just a couple people in this situation, it's, it's been well worth it because there's a lot, there's a lot there to offer to people when you're in a situation, and I'm just glad I got the opportunity to share it. Well, thank you very much for being. Yeah, thanks for having me.